Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. Today I have, uh, I'm just going to let you pronounce your name because it's so difficult. Yes, um, a pleasure to be on the podcast. My name is Hernande Altima. And please explain to my audience what you do. Certainly. First, let me begin by thanking you for inviting me onto the show. It was just a beautiful surprise to be reached, to be contacted by you. I also, so for all the listeners out there to give you an idea of what I do and who I am and what makes me tick is that I am a practicing attorney who works for a state senator in the state of Maryland, and I have the wonderful opportunity of being a change maker both in the courtroom as well as in the area of legislation. So that is what sums up my um, moment when I wake up and the moment where I go to, go to bed is constantly trying to figure out how to um, affect change through law. Um, and on, on the side, I have a passion with educating people, so I have a blog called First Gen Rise Blog. And it is basically a forum where first-generation students, graduates, and professionals can come and read the stories of other first-gens, get insight on how to kind of pace through academia and professional world so that they, too, may also rise to the top of their profession. And, um, and excitingly enough, I have um, – will be releasing my first book um, next month. So this is – really to enlighten, educate those that um, are experiencing the things that I've experienced as being a first-generation attorney, and I want to impart advice on those that, that could benefit from it. Well, thank you for saying that. And when you say first-generation, where are you coming from? What country? Uh, my parents are from the Caribbean, so the specific country is Haiti. Um, um, uh huh. Yes, so the Western Hemisphere is still part of that. Uh huh. Well, I spent many, many, many years in the Bahamas. So That's I know my Haitians. I, I know my Cubans, too. <laughs> and so Haitians and Cubans and Bahamians seem to get along, but, um, so, Okay, now I have a question for you. How does it feel being a first-generation attorney? Because I have never heard of that term in my life, and I'm sure my audience hasn't t- hasn't heard of that term in my in their lives either. Well, interestingly, um, you know, we are a small population of people, first generation. Um, attorneys in the sense of when I was going to law school and I went to law school at um, Morris A. Dean School of Law Hofstra University in in New York, I um, was surprised that this new club had existed. And so it was for those individuals that are the first in their families to attend um, law school. Um, And so they weren't privy to, we weren't privy to that kind of information. So the term first generation attorney is really for um, those individuals that have are the first in their families to um, graduate from law school and then take the bar and pass and, you know, be that representative in their family. For me, it's been an overwhelming experience just because of the fact that I've, get to, I've been able to assist my own immediate family in their own issues. They, you know, I put on the blog recently, First Gen Rise blog, how um, my uncle was, um, his health was declining, and I assisted him by helping my my mother um, initiate the power of attorney so that we can um, begin the process of when he when something was going to happen to him that we've had that in place before it happened. So, yeah. you know, helping my own family really recognize some of the legal things that need to be in place before um, before other unnecessary things happen. So, and I have colleagues and friends that have. Express the same um, situation where they may have business 
uh, family members that who are in business where they've been able to come to their aid, um, maybe with a trademark, with maybe with any intellectual property. And so you're really, you know, if, if you don't get to learn in a position um, where if in a, a traditional aspect of being in big law or in criminal, you definitely get to learn with your own family how to advocate for someone or a system um, transactionally in that, in that kind of um, area. And I'm going to get some of this out there. Because you mentioned the house crisis with your uncle, and what's happening in Obamacare right now is despicable. And so from the attorney side slash the representative side, how do you feel about all this? Um. Well, it it is an unfortunate situation. Um, I know there are very there are many people that have benefited from Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, um, and have really um, gotten to see many of their doctors or or have been able to um, really further their diagnosis or treating their diagnosis. So there has been many good um, outcomes. To this legislation, this landmark legislation that was passed under the Obama administration, and unfortunately, um, I think, you know, this, you know, my opinion only in the sense of, I think, you know, there is some type of, of, of course, everyone sees that there's fixes that need to be made with um, Obamacare. It really was a draft for us to improve upon on certain situations, um, but it is so unfortunate because, you know, as you have stated. Um, you know, we've seen in the news how many people with disabilities have benefited from this um, legislation. Um, it would be such a shame to, um, you know, not really build upon it. Um, we don't need to, it to be repealed, but definitely should not be um, taken away from this certain group of people that have truly seen their care um, changed and, and definitely improved. Um, so it would be certainly a step back if if it, it was written, you know, without much assessment. And so, um, but in the news, they're showing that you know there is some resistance to just outright getting it, removing it. So there there definitely is um, some hope there for those that are still worried about losing their health care. And in the state of Maryland, we definitely have those issues of people being worried. Um, in my position, working with the legislator, she's very much into health care, so she is constantly staying abreast of what is going on on the national level so that we can figure out or be able to um, really plan for something if it were to ha- happen. But Maryland has always been a state to kind of be the pioneer of health care, and so they have instituted many um, solutions, but this will definitely be a drawback. And so I, you know, as someone who works, uh, you know, on the staffer, um, in aspects and that kind of role, you know, I'm definitely watching it so that I can be prepared to know how we can go in and initiate a plan of action. Well, initiating a plan of action is what we're all going to have to do. I mean, the U.S. government, I'm sorry, is not going to help us out. I mean, a plan of action, I have my own plan of action, and my own plan of action is to step forward and um, become a freelance writer. And my fan base knows this by now, but they don't know why I'm actually doing it. I'm doing it because I have a physical disability and I could make more money, I could make more money public speaking and writing books than I can teaching. And when push comes to shove, I am paying for my own health insurance. My employer at this time for my house insurance. So this is why I'm in a clear pivot now while I still while I still am healthy. Right, right. And 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 it is those kinds of questions that have to be um you know thought of um when we're in these these situations. Um it is tough to, you know, handle you know, and so it's it's it, it's impressive. You know, you're very an impressive person because of the fact that you have really, you know, adapted 
to every situation that you're presented with, it sounds like. And it's it's very impressive that you impressive that you are um, recognizing that you have to think of what you'll need to do to supplement um, yourself and 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 supplement um, other areas. And so the healthcare industry is 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 very complex. It's it's, it's very confusing, um, even as you know people that are engaged in it. Um, and so. I, I I do think you have something there with the sense of, you know, you have to figure out how to plan for yourself to be able to still uh, um, obtain or have access to the care that you need, and it seems like you're definitely yeah. doing that. Well, thank you for saying that. But why I'm doing that, because I can't um, put myself in where I can't necessarily put my company first and forget about me. Well, we all can't do that. We all can't do Mm -hmm. that. As a disabled woman, I can't put my company first, and I can't even put my job first. I need to put me first. So that's why I'm doing that. And so I appreciate you explaining to all my fans that Melon is taking the steps it needs to be the uncanny edge of healthcare. And I believe Virginia is um, too, and so, and I know the phone is too, and so I think it's wonderful that we all make action for ourselves. Now, what is your favorite book? It doesn't have to be a business book. It just has to be a book that you go back to time and time again? Um, well, the book that I have, um, I, I would prefer to, to say a book that I've recently um, read and have has been the theme of many books that I have read over the um, past several years since graduating law school. Um, and the book that I would say that I have cherished the most and have recommended the most is um, Angela um, Duckworth, I want to say. Her name is Miss. It's, it's a book uh, called Grit, and it really combines, you know, what is necessary for um, you to succeed and push through all of your bad days um, and really appreciate the good days. And so, you know, I think Grit, you know, has a two- important words of passion and perseverance and you know without passion you really can't persevere so that and the, the, the reason the book captures me the most is that it gives examples about anything it, it gives examples about football teams it gives examples about um, musicians it gives examples about just young individuals and so it just is a, a book about different stories that shows that grit can be seen in everything in any example in any um, arena and so I truly enjoy that book because it kind of brings perspective into why or how I should be moving throughout the, the world because I need to have grit to, to withstand um, all the things that are going throughout my day and so it's definitely a book that I have made notes in and that I have written notes and, and definitely refer back to. So that book is called Grit, and I presume it could be found on Amazon. I believe so. And what has been your favorite moment in all this? What has been your biggest success and your biggest entrepreneurial downfall? I think for me, the with since launching the first Gen Rise blog, the moment that has been amazing has been just the feedback that I get from the different people on social media, on the blog, um, and it's just been overwhelming because of the fact that they're looking for more. They're you know they're they're really seeking for guidance, and and I just recall back in my time that all I wanted to do was just look up and, and, and bookmark as many things that I can so I can refer back to them and really push forward. And so what has been just 
amazing is just the type of of um, comments and remarks that I'm getting from people saying, well, can you elaborate on this or can you post about this? And, 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 and it's really driving the conversation and transforming my blog into what it was, you know, really thoughts of what I felt and then to, you know, getting guest bloggers or getting um, different kinds of challenges and now to releasing um, the, the my first book. And so that's been um, something that has been enjoyable. Um, now for the challenges, um, and I, I believe that's what you asked, and I apologize if I, I may be misspeaking, um, but the challenges I have found is trying to have a clearinghouse of all of this, all of these ideas. Um, I'm still a one-woman show, um, and, and, and to hear from you, um, I think you have um, two people show, and so that's just you know, that's wonderful. I would love to have another person to assist me. Um, and so it's trying to figure out the timing of everything. I want to stay current. Um, I want to stay, you know, within the realm of the vision of the blog. I want to really definitely benefit the, the readers that I have because, you know, I'm touching on a lot of things. I'm touching on first-generation students, the graduates, those are in, who are in the professional world. So that's a, 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 a breath of you know, people that I am really trying to reach out to. So it's been a challenge to make sure that I'm speaking to those different audiences while still, in you know, grabbing those that I might not be speaking to. So it's, it's, it's definitely one of those um, challenges. But please tell me if I, I did not answer your question. Oh, no, you answered my question perfectly fine. You, it's a challenge being a one person show and having a full time job at that and a ten <laughs> full time job, my God. So <laughs> what has what is your favorite podcast? It doesn't have to be a podcast that you listen to on a daily basis. It just has to be a podcast that you listen to and yes, NPR does count. Um, you know, I I would have to say this is going to be a hard um, you know, the the, the podcast that I, I I you know, enjoy um listening to is this podcast called The Janista. Um, I think finances are very yes. important. <laughs> so, yes. One of the um people that I have enjoyed um because she provides plenty of tips and advice and and really brings it down to, um, you know, um, I don't want to say layman, layman's terms, but it's very, finance is a very complex, the terminology is very complex. I um, am learning as I go along and just the different things that I need to do, um, you know, since, you know, since being a professional, you know, after graduating. So she teaches you about home ownership. She teaches you about businesses, how to, what, what the three types of people you should be having as an accountant, a lawyer, and um, I forget the third one, um, but I'm sure it's something, probably someone that assists you with uh, scheduling, just an assistant, I'm sure. And and so she really breaks down, even with an investment, your stocks, you know, with retirement, your student loans. You know, I've been um, in school before, and so I enjoy that podcast just to, to, to remind me of my own ne- – Financial responsibility in 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 my you know within my 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 livelihood and so I think it's it's been one of my podcasts that I I enjoy. Well, isn't that wonderful? And it's called the Bachanita, you guys. And to throw another one in there that um, breaks it down into women's terms, it's also Brown Ambition. You guys should go check that one out because. Between the Budgetista and Brown Ambition, it's going to make a perfect combination. I'll have to definitely look at that. I've never heard of it. Well, there we go. So I am going to ask you, what is your favorite technology tool that you use on a daily basis? Um, I would... I would have to say my favorite at the moment is um, Hootsuite only because of the fact that I have multiple social media accounts and 
it's very important for it to be um, utilized. And so I I need it to be um, – I need my social media to be active, um, and I need my – supposed to be to be done and so to keep track of it is um not the best (laughs) um if i did it on my own but to have them you know the tool that tool has been helpful especially when i'm on vacation um i like you know as you stated i have intense roles and so when i do get to relax i want to be able to relax without being concerned and so that tool has helped me appear that i'm still posting even if I'm not posting and so yes yeah, <laughs> we want to make it appear as if you're posting when she's yeah, not posting yeah. because we know that you guys this is a first time lawyer we're talking to also a blogger and so yeah yeah this is not a walk in the book yes yes not at all not at all this is not a walking book. So if you had to be educated by anyone, who would it be and why, inside or outside your field? Well, I would have to say, for me, um, ever since I learned that um, former First Lady Michelle Obama and I share the same birthday, I've always uh-huh. <laughs> wanted to, to want to be um, – educated by her or in a training program. If she has an academy somewhere in a, if she's in the D.C. area, so I'm hopeful that I will run into her at some point while she's still here, um, I would love to be a, one of her fellowships or whatever she has um, because she has definitely demonstrated such grace, um, has made people feel excited about being intelligent again, has made people feel good about being healthy, has really been a support to her her girls, has been a support to former President um, Barack Obama. And so she has demonstrated, you know, former President George Bush and her have a great time when, you know, when you watch them on TV. And so there's just something about her that draws people to her. And and, and I just want to learn her style and grace and, and, and want to know how she just thinks of these great lines, you know, you know, and I just think that, you know, and we're both lawyers, and, you know, and I just think there's just something about her that I have enjoyed her presence and would love to be in her presence. And I want to know where can people find you and where can people get a hold of you if they want to be involved with your blog? I so the, the the handle for the social media media is at first gen rise. So first F I R S T Gen is G E N and then Rise R I S T. So one word. And so if you plug it into the URL for the website, it'll be www.firstgenrise.com. And so that is where people can find me. Um, the same handle is again on social is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and then that's the the website for the blog. Now, when people come to the blog, they'll see so many different things, and um, you know, there's been a, a revamping of the of the website so that it's much more user friendly. Um, in a few days, I'll be posting the details for my first book, and so that I can become a you know an author like you. Um, and it'll be wonderful yes. that that um, added to um, the things that I'll be doing. And the book is really a trans is a story of of what my upbringing was like. The book is a story that entails what I um, um, handled as having two identities: one as being an American born, but having still Caribbean um, values and um, traditions, and then discusses you know the educational system of how I engaged in it and and the, the triumphs and the tribulations and then you know to the current stage of being in my profession and, and navigating through the, the the different types of strategies that are helpful for me to have gotten to the position I am so it's um, somewhat in a chronology but definitely a flow that will engage the reader into learning that it's okay to to redefine themselves and and stay hold to this unique 
um, commun- you know, commun- um, identity. And what is it your book called? So the book is called The The Rise of a First Gen. The Rise of a First Gen. And you guys, it's still me out on Amazon, I presume, next month. So please, 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 please go to Paul and and her book because it's going to be a fabulous book. I know it is. And it's going to be on Kindle. It's going to be in paperback. And I know that she would appreciate all your support in this book because we want to make it number one. <laughs> yes. I would love to. That'd yes. Be awesome. We want to make it number one. And, yeah, so without your support, it's not going to get number one, you guys. So please, 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 please support her and her journey and her book. And that being said, my book is coming out next week, believe it or not, the Mosaic of CP. The audio version is launching August 12th, but both the Kindle version and the paperback version will be launching next week as of Thursday. I'm planning to do the setup end of it Tuesday, so my book will be launching um, next week. And as you guys know, I want to be a New York Times bestselling author with that. And I have to sell 99K books with that. So you guys have to support me on that one because you must support all independent published authors because without you guys, we can't do it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. My colleague on the other end said nope. So before I let uh, mine go, I just want to have her ask me a couple of questions that she is wanting to ask me. Definitely. Definitely. I I know you mentioned earlier um, that you are employed um and I would, I'm curious to find out who who are you with and what do you do in that capacity? <laughs> oh, geez. Well, I am um, a high ed preschool teacher. Let's just put that right out there. And first and foremost, I taught a pre- preschool drama for 11 years between two different um, schools. And now I'll be teaching third grade music up until 2019 or 2020, depending how the universe decides to work with me. And then I'll be coming, becoming a full, full on freelance writer and published author. Lovely. That is fabulous. Oh, lovely. Well, I now, think so too. And depending on how the universe wants to work with me. Well, the universe seems to always seems to work out exactly how it's supposed to, but I think you'll yours is just destined for greatness. Well, thank you for saying that. May I ask another question? I'm just curious because I was, yeah. I had just taken the time to listen to a few of your podcasts prior to, to joining you. And so I wanted to really, um, because you've had such a wide range of people give you all this information, um, you know, provide with them so many different conversations. And I just wanted to know, you know, how how do you see the, the podcast going um, in the next few, you know, just in the next, the remainder of the, the year, you know, maybe a short-term look of it. Now, well, long-term. I, um, I already have. 56,000 downloads of this podcast of all time. And so I'm hoping to expand my reach. I'm hoping to hit the New York Times. That's the only list, and I know I will. And after I hit the New York Times, that's the only list, my podcast will just exploding because, as you guys know, hitting the New York Times, that's the only list as an independent 
also, all as a traditionally published author, is so difficult. So I'm only asking for it once. And this is a book I'm asking for in all any of my books, quite frankly. So I'm working on that goal. And then after that, the podcast, I hope, will explode because people will see my work on the New York Times bestseller list. Well, I wish you very much luck on that. That's been a, a wonderful goal to have. Um, and I know your listeners are really um, – your fans are really listening and, and will assist you with that. So that's that's wonderful. Well, let's hope today. Let's hope that they do. And you guys, this is my PSA. Um, if you go buy a book on Amazon, please, 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 please leave a review for the next gen or the mosaic of CP or any of my books or any book by uh, independent published author, and please follow them on Amazon so you guys know their latest work. But all the reviews help with the Amazon rankings and push it to number one and then put, and then push it to the New York Times. That's a little less. So please, 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 when the next gen comes out, rising comes out, please Go buy a copy, leave a review, buy a copy on Kindle. That's going to be the easiest. And you guys don't need a Kindle app, a Kindle device necessarily. You need a Kindle app. That's all you have to do. And it comes on iPhones. It comes on Macintosh. It comes on Windows. It comes on Android. It's all over the place. All you have to do is search Kindle app in either the Google Play Store or the iPhone app store on your iPad or on your Android device on your tablet from Android. So you guys don't need a Kindle um, reader. You just need an app to get Kindle books. So please, 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 please go buy books and go leave a review. And I, I would love heart. to. Uh, yeah, you, you wholly back up my statement because you. This is the first time of you doing this, so you need all the help you can get. And yeah. I just hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode. I hope you guys enjoyed what the first gen had to say. A man had to say. And just carry on and just try to make best out of the bad situation. I know we got a little bit political, but we tried to make it light political so you guys wouldn't get buried in the political news. And so just try and make this the best situation you can. And I appreciate Nen and her time today, and I know she's got a fairly busy schedule. And I just appreciate you guys for listening. This podcast has been sponsored by Grace by Grit. Grace by Grit is a clothing line out of California. And it is a clothing line out of California. And we want to support them. They are actually giving you guys 20% off to help you guys out when you guys need athletic clothes. Look for Grace by Grit. All that information will be in the show notes and immense information will be in the show notes. And so I appreciate you guys tuning in for another fabulous episode. Thanks to you guys. Thank you.